Welcome to the Hockey Writers Prospect Corner, a show with our top prospects writing crew, bringing you the latest news, analysis, scouting reports, mocks, rankings, and much more. From the world juniors to the NHL draft floor, from the farm to the NHL, our team covers everything that happens in the world of prospects. So sit back, grab a notebook, and get ready for Prospect Corner. Prospect Corner. Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Prospect Corner presented by the Hockey Writers. Uh, I am your host, Matthew Zader, and um, we're back for another week of a show, and a lot has happened in this past week. Uh, again, joined by uh, my fellow Prospects experts, Peter Barracchini. How are you doing, Peter? Doing great. Doing great. Uh, rough week in Leaf Nation, so hopefully some Prospect Talk is going to cheer me right up. Yeah, that's right. And uh, also joined by Greg Boysen. Uh, Greg, how are you doing this week? Uh, ready to focus on some prospects. That's for sure. It's been a crazy week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been a tough week, uh, for, I mean, for everyone in the hockey world and, you know, just off the top of just, uh, the break, you know, Kyle beach coming out with that. Uh, we won't talk a lot about it, but uh, everyone knows about, it. uh, make sure you're give, uh, Greg's, uh, piece of read. He just released this morning. Uh, it's a great piece. And, Kind of summarizes everything uh, and yeah just give that a read uh, it's it's something that needs to be read so um where we're at yeah. and where we need to be that's right yeah um so on lighter notes let's talk about prospects um you know it's a uh, kyle beach was a prospect way back when and uh too bad it didn't you know everything didn't go right with for him but uh we're gonna talk about some great some other great prospects here that are coming up um we're going to have a different format of this show. We're going to go across the leagues in Canada um, today and then talk about the, the AHL as well right at the end. Um, we're just going to first, but first, we'll talk about the NHL and the Calder Trophy race. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's heating up. You know, like Cole Caulfield was supposed to be the runaway guy and it's making us all look bad. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> said, oh yeah, he can, he'll, he'll do it easily. No, it's not happening. Um, at least not right now. I mean, he can turn it around. It's only eight games in for him. It, you know, it could happen. But uh, let's talk about the guys that are leading the charge right now and some a couple Red Wings prospects, uh, Lucas Raymond and uh, Maurice Sider. And there's another guy in San Jose, Jonathan Dolan, who was, uh, unfortunately, he was, he was a Canucks prospect uh, a while ago, got traded away and uh, well, I don't want to really talk about that, but uh, <laughs> he's looking pretty good in San Jose. Um, just some thoughts on, on the two guys, these three guys that have come and kind of burst out of the gates here and caught quite a bit ahead of Cole Caulfield. Uh, Peter, we'll start with you on this one. I mean, what do you make of this? Uh, you know, we thought these guys were as, at least Cider and Raymond were going to do it, but mm-hmm. are you surprised they're doing it this early? Uh, yes and no. I'm yes in the sense that you know very little little NHL experience, especially for Raymond Sider. At least has some of that AHL game in him playing in North America. But Lucas Raymond has adapted very easily. I mean, he doesn't look a, like a step out of place and everything. Um, his shot, his vision, his passing. He he's just on full display at this point. And you know, call it the youth movement in, uh, in Detroit right now, not necessarily because they still got a lot of young players on the roster itself, but these are going to be key players that they're going to be leading upon. They're getting already top minutes. They're important players already, and they're still young. And, you know, it just shows that the mindset with the team where they're at right now, that they're going to compete. They're not going to be bowled over. They're not going to be taken advantage of. They're going to fight and, you know, with their two leading rookies, this is absolutely tremendous. And same situation with the San Jose Sharks and their hot start with Jonathan Dolan as well. I mean, we expected him to burst out onto the scenes and maybe, you know, make a name for himself. But again, he's stepping right up to the plate. A lot of names in this rookie class that we didn't expect to maybe have much of a performance, especially on a team like San Jose, where we didn't expect him to have that hot start, are playing well. And players like Cole Caulfield really aren't. And, it, and he is going to bounce back at some point. But based on what we're seeing right now with uh, with all three of those, Trevor Zegras, Anton Lundell, maybe not so much getting some uh, noise, but maybe they're starting to pick their game up at this point. 
there, there's a lot to love about. And you know what? I, I'm just going to say it right out. I picked up Lucas Raymond in fantasy simply <laughs> because he's going to be doing well. And uh, it looks like it may pay off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing uh, how these two guys have come into the league and, mm-hmm. you know, right off the bat, like Raymond's playing on the top line uh, in Detroit and uh, Detroit's actually playing pretty well. I don't know if it's sustainable, but you know, um, Greg, going to this one, can they sustain this? I mean, can they sustain this production and stay in the conversation and beat Cole Caulfield and then follow up to that? Can Caulfield come back uh, from his slow start? He only has a, one assist in eight games. Uh, what do you think? Um, I mean, as far as these, these guys you mentioned sustaining, probably not at this high level. I mean, the thing about these rookies is the league is going to adjust to them. They're going to, the, the video is going to be out. They're going to find their tendencies. The league is going to adjust. It's going to be up to these young kids then to readjust and, and make that change to, to, you know, that's going to be the key. Will they be able to make that readjustment? And how long will it take? So these guys are going to hit a wall at some point. It's natural. We see it in almost every case. Every once in a while, you get a freak of nature like Connor McDavid, and the league still hasn't figured out how to adjust yeah. to him. But <laughs> so they'll they'll hit their slow spots. And on the flip side, Caulfield, he's going to come around. Now, obviously, a, a really disappointing start for him. But you could say that completely about uh, the Canadians. I mean, that that's a team that. Yeah, they were the Cinderella team. They made it to the cup final last year. Caulfield was a huge part of that. They don't get there without him. Um, And then coming into this season, they lost so much. You know, a guy like Shea Weber gone for the year. Carey Price hasn't played. You do take that away from any team, not only on the ice, but off the ice. And you're going to be look, you're going to look lost for a few games. They've played better the last couple games out. Uh, The thing with Caulfield when he starts to score, he's going to score in bunches. Yeah. He may not have any goals now, but when he gets that first one, you're going to see he's going to get six in five games or seven in four games. And all of a sudden, it's going to be 15 games into the season. He's got 11 goals. And you're just going to look at his stats at the end of the year, and no one's going to remember that, hey, first 10 games, he didn't score. So there's 90% of this season still go a long way. Yeah, yeah. And as I've mentioned before, Caulfield, plays in the perfect market where he doesn't have to be great to get the votes. He just has to be pretty good. Yeah. Um, so he's got, <laughs> definitely has that advantage, especially over a guy like uh, Dolan in, in San Jose. I mean, it's going to be tough for him to get Calder votes just because of where he plays. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Um, so uh, to sum it up, you know, the, the young guys off to a good start, will they sustain scoring and producing at this pace? Probably not, but they'll still do a high level through the year and Caulfield. He's going to come around. He's just, that shot is too damn good to it for it to be silent the whole year. No, I, I, I mean, Caulfield will bounce back. I mean, he's like I said, it's too skilled not to, um, but I mean, it's great to have some competition, right? I mean, it, it's, it's boring to see one guy just kind of walk away with it. So it's going to be great to see how these guys can keep going uh, like I say, they look amazing. Raymond's got eight points in eight games. Cider, seven and eight. Almost scored. Well, I thought he scored his first NHL goal yesterday, but uh, it gave to Pius Suter. So that's coming for him. But uh, uh, yeah, so that's the Calder Trophy race. And uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep looking at that throughout the year on the show. So um, let's move into this. Uh, going around the leagues in, in Canada here to start. We'll start out West in the Western Hockey League. Um, starting with the projected 2022 first rounders. I mean, these two aren't going to be the only ones probably, but uh, these are the guys on the players to watch. We had on that last week's episode, uh, Denton Matejcik and Connor Geeky um, starting with Geeky. I mean, he's got four goals, 11 points in the 12 games he's played. Um, we'll start with you, Peter on, on Geeky. What have you seen from him early this season that, uh, kind of stepped out why he's on this player to watch list. I mean, he's surely <laughs> um, ripping it up right now. Mm-hmm. The knock on geeky has always been his skating. Uh, obviously it's going to be a major talking point for a player of his size, but I think he's come around and like and made improvements to his stride, but uh, throughout the whole entire season so far, it's been his hands. I mean, he's, he has really soft hands, able to make moves in tight and in, in, in difficult situations where, normally you wouldn't a player wouldn't be able to come out of that 
uh, spot. And Geeky does it every single time. He's always successful, always making a move, getting into a great shooting area or even passing it off to his teammates. So his hands is very top notch. I'm calling him Connor Geeky at this point because of the moves that he's able to make consistently. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited to see what he can do from here on out. I mean, this is a guy that has top 10 potential labeled all over him. Um, I, I think that that's going to be very a very respectful range for him, for him to maintain and be that kind of power forward uh, player, but with a little bit more of an offensive flair, even though he's a bigger player. Um, usually those kind of players are, you know, don't have the soft hands, but he has it. He's going to be a full package player right now, and he's going to be a very major threat. Yeah, uh, he was on, he's on a team that had a ridiculous run, just got their streak broken. I mean, they started the season on a ridiculous 11-0 and mm-hmm. run, right? So it's like, yeah, it's it's insane. He's on a great team, too, and he helped them along with that. Um, the other guy, Greg, we'll talk to you on this one, uh, Denton Matejchuk, or Matejchuk, uh, Moose Jaw Warriors. Three goals, eight points in the first 10 games here. Had a uh, goal and assist yesterday. Um Friday on Friday. Um, what do you think about his game so far? Uh, he's been solid. I mean, and that's, that's kind of why they, he, his name showed up on that at the NHL scouting list last week that we talked about. Um, you know, he's, he's that smart and mobile two-way defender that a lot of uh, NHL GMs are, are looking for. He's a good puck moving ability. Um, he's not flashy, by any sense of the imagination, but he's a very smart player. Um, you know, his, his offense production is up a tick uh, to start this year. Um, you know, it's, he hasn't really had a whole lot of uh, WHL experience, just 23 games in the previous two years, obviously last year, um, you know, everybody kind of lost that year there, but uh, a really good start to his season. Um, as I said, he's good skater you know he's got to obviously as all young defenders he's got to get a little bit better in his own zone but three goals and five assists through 10 games that's obviously going to turn uh turn some heads uh especially from the blue line there and uh you know he's, he's definitely one to watch um you know he's that undersized defenseman that that teams certainly love to have and uh he's, he's got a long way to go still i think but he's definitely an intriguing prospect yeah, um, I mean, these guys are going to be uh, part of the discussion throughout the season. I mean, especially to keep going on it. Uh, let's go to some other guys that have kind of stood out uh, for for you, Peter. We'll start with you on this. Um, other guys that you've seen, doesn't have to be under, um, not drafted. It can be undrafted, drafted, whatever. Um, what guys have you seen early on uh, in the WHL? I'm, I'm going to go to uh, stick with the Winnipeg guys and go to Connor Deakey's teammate in Carson Lambos. And this is a player that was very, I, I, w- I wouldn't say a hot button issue, but like there was a lot of talks about his consistency, um, considering the fact that he had 32 points in his rookie season, dealt with injuries, uh, didn't quite have the poor p- performance that he did overseas. And his stock kind of dropped, fell off at that point. So you were wondering to see if maybe if he teams are willing to take a flyer on him, does he still have that potential to be a top four defenseman? And I'm seeing that this season. I'm still seeing, you know, the ability, the puck moving ability, the two-way game. He's got a bit of bite to his game as well. Um, not not very not physical all the time, but you know he's engaging. He's always battling, and to me, I think he's just turning a page and proving that you know last season wasn't a fluke or that season was a fluke, and that he's still worthy of being a top prospect. And it looks like the Minnesota Wild have really, really took took it to took advantage of that by selecting him 26 overall because he's got a lot of upside great vision and i i i expected him to bounce back he was too good not to i initially had him in my top three at the beginning in terms of rankings and obviously he fell out because of you know it, it, it is what it is but right now he's showing that maybe he was worthy of staying in that top 15 or even top 10 at that point so um good on him i expected big things and we're seeing it unfold yeah, I mean, like you said, he was supposed to be he was supposed to be one of the top uh, top picks uh, mm-hmm. last season, so uh, last draft. So, uh, yeah, the Wild got a got a, a steal where they got him. Um, Greg, we'll go to you. Uh, Who have you seen in the WHL so far that uh, has caught your eye and everyone should be watching um, so far? Well, it, 
it's a guy that we all know already, and that's Sebastian Cosa, the goaltender uh, with yeah. the Edmonton Oil Kings. He's, he's. I mean, it's he had a ridiculous year last year, uh, 1.57 goals against and a 941 save percentage in 19 games. Of course, we know the Red Wings. There we go, more Red Wings prospects. But they they <laughs> took him in the first round, and you know he wasn't. They took him over over Jesper Wallstead, who was you know the can't miss goalie prospect. So here you get all this pressure on you, and what does he do? His numbers so far this season are even better than they were yeah. last year. He's got a 1.33 goals against and a 9.49 save percentage in his nine games. He hasn't given up more than two goals in a start yet. It's been two or less all time. I mean, he's just – he's given up 12 goals in nine games. It's he, And somehow he's lost twice. I don't understand how that's <laughs> even possible. What are you guys – doing out there and I mean you get a goalie like that you should never lose a game but uh you know he was taking 15th overall last year and he's showing that maybe 14 other GMs made a mistake by not taking Mm -hmm. him I mean this kid is the goods granted yes it's the WHL it's juniors it's not the NHL but he's been impressive and his, his path to the to the to Detroit could be a quick one yeah, that's for sure. I mean, he's been impressive ever since the draft, and that's why he was drafted so high. Um, so, I mean, you know, for me, uh, Tristan Robbins, I mean, it may be an obvious choice. He leads the league and he leads the WHL in points. Uh, but, uh, I mean, he's been impressive. San Jose Sharks prospect, um, you know, 19 points in nine games. <laughs> this is ridiculous. So, you know, he's he's got a ton of skill and uh I think he's probably going to be the NHL uh, pretty quick again. I mean, it's the WHL. I mean, you never know. Some guys rip it up and come to the NHL and become just grinders or don't make it. But, uh, you know, it's still impressive to have that many points and be that dominant. Uh, he's got points in all all games he's played, uh, leading the blades there. So, uh, yeah, d- definitely, definitely a, a great pick by the Sharks there um, to add to their stable of, you know, they are in kind of a rebuild right now. So, they need all the great, good prospects that they can get. Um, so, yeah, um, let's go to the Ontario Hockey League, the OHL, going more out east here. Um, starting with the only guy, like you said, the only guy in the OHL that was or is supposed to be in the first round. Like I say, there's going to be other guys who are going to push their way into it. And Matthew Poitras, uh, Peter, what do you think about the, his start to the season? Uh, it's not as Im- impressive as everyone else is right now, but he's still putting up some points. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really impressive to, I mean, still seven points in nine games, it may not be a lot, but you know what, considering the fact that the OHL didn't have a league last season, um, considering that he, he was supposed to have that rookie year, really didn't quite have it, but now, you know, he's getting that opportunity. He's getting his chances and he's providing a very good two way ability. You know, he's got great vision, great awareness. Um, I mean, I, I again, I, I do think that there are some other players that should be taken note of besides Matthew Poitras. Um, obviously Shane Wright's number one, um, two other guys that I'm really liking in the Ontario hockey league that maybe should gain more attention is both uh, Bryce McConnell Barker from the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds and Ty Nelson of the North Bay Battalion. Um, Nelson's really coming into his own right now. Same situation as Poitras, supposed to be a rookie, didn't really get his chance, but he's very feisty for a defenseman that's around 5'9", 5'10". He shows no quit. He's always determined. He's always battling. And I've always liked Bryce McConnell Barker. He's got that two-way game, but he's got a shooter's mentality. So he can hurt you in both ways, away and with the puck. Um, I, I I know you asked me about Poitras, but it's it's kind of hard because you know, really small sample with him, but with all the other players, it's, it's the same situation. And obviously, they have him as an A-rated player. There there should be a few others in that in that uh, in that category as well because two two players from the Ontario Hockey League that that's uncanny we've never yeah. seen anything like that in the past so uh granted that Poitras has had a good start I think that there are so some other names that should be in that category along with him as well yeah I mean like we said before it's it's because of all the scouts just didn't see a lot of these guys and mm-hmm. to put them on player to watch list right at the beginning or they didn't think it was right yet but i mean the next list is going to have tons more ohl players i mean that's that's just a given um 
Greg, we'll start with you on the on the prospects to watch that or standouts uh, to start the season in the OHL. Uh, what do you think? I like what I've seen so far out of uh, a kid that I actually got to see play a little bit in the AHL last year, and that's uh, Luke Evangelista of the uh, London Knights. He's tied for the uh, uh, lead league in goals with ten so far. He's got ten goals and five uh, five assists through his first eight games there with London. Um, you know, he, he, he was one of those few players that in the OHL that got the ad- advantage of being able to play in the AHL last year. Uh, he played for 14 games. I think it was last year with the Chicago Wolves and uh, as a Nashville uh, Predators prospect and picked up four assists in those pro games. He was never a guy that um, he didn't really look out of place. You know, he, he wasn't a, a difference maker in his first pro stint by any means, but he definitely didn't look, like he didn't belong, you know, he, he was calm and, 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 and made some plays. So he's off to a really good start. I'm, I'm interested to see how he finishes out this season. Um, you know, the Predators, uh, you know, they're not, you know, uh, spectacular by any means at the, at the NHL level right now, but they've got some, uh, some pretty good kids coming up. You know, we've seen what Phil Tomasino can do. Uh, he's going to be a good player for them for a long time. I think, uh, Evangelista is another guy in that youth movement in Nashville that, you know, can bring some excitement to a franchise that really hasn't had too many exciting players throughout their uh, history. Yeah, especially for prospects. I mean, I can't really remember the last exciting prospect that the Predators really had on forward. I mean, defense. I mean, they, they just make defensemen, but uh, <laughs> they're a factory for those guys. And you can just list them off in the NHL that uh, have hit. Um, Peter, uh, who do you think OHL guys that uh, you've seen stand out so far this season? Um, I, 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 I was going to say Luke Evangelisa, but Greg took my took my option but i i mean you, you can't go wrong with sasha Pasajov. i mean this is a guy who's leading the league it kind of like you with tristan robbins I, you hate to go to the guy leading the league but i mean he he's standing out he's performing uh considering the fact that you know he was te- technically a third round pick he should have yeah. been higher early late first early second i don't know how someone with his talent and his skill set could drop all the way down known as a playmaker, but he isn't afraid to shoot. He's already got 10 goals out of it or 17 of his points or 10 goals, 43 shots on net. And that to me, I believe that that is uh, leading the league in shots. Um, Sorry. He is third, third in the OHL in terms of shots on goal. So he's got that shooter's mentality. He's still very lethal as a playmaker. Um, I, 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 I'm, again, I'm still baffled that the fact that he dropped at a third round when he should have been at least an early second round pick. So, I mean, good on the Anaheim Ducks for their scouting because, Hey, they're, they're getting a potentially the leading uh, point getter or, or, uh, yeah, potentially at, at the end of this year, he could uh, lead the league in points and they got a really good player on their hands. <laughs> yeah. Pass the job. I, I... I still can't remember it. Why isn't he getting picked? I mean, going mm-hmm. down, we're going to the third round and still not picked. This yeah. guy wasn't supposed to go that low. I mean, I had him rated at one point. I think I had him rated in the twenties uh, yeah. in my in the rankings. And you know, to drop into the third round is insane. I mean, the depth's got a he's got a quite a player coming up. Um, I was going to go past the job, but I'll, I'll go another guy and Ty to Leo. Um, Edmonton Oilers, this guy's a fifth-round pick. Um, again, he's ripping up the league. got 16 points already, 10 games. A lot of them are assists, mind you, but, I mean, assists are points. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, having, a, you know, playmaking and, uh, you know, yeah, he, he's, he's uh, started off the season quite well. And, uh, again, Oilers, they need some other prospects in their system. I mean, they got McDavid, Dreisaitl, but – they need some other guys pushing from the bottom. Um, they still need depth. I mean, that's the one thing the Oilers are still in, in search of. They can't be just that one line team. Um, they've got some prospects coming that uh, are going to need to start hitting because uh, once McDavid and Dryset are gone, who's going to take up, take over. Yeah. Right. So I'm not saying Toledo is going to be that guy, but uh, you know, he's another guy in their system. He's um, a player that yeah. uh, will use puck possession and the fact that the Oilers have got him and the fact that, you know, he's a puck hound, he always goes in on the four check. 
that's going to help them out in the future because they needed a few more of those players. Yeah, I mean, they got Zach Hyman. I mean, he's not young, but uh, <laughs> those types of players, right? Yes. Uh, and he's he's doing pretty well in Edmonton right now. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the halfway point of the show. Um, yeah, so this is the Prospects Corner presented by the Hockey Writers. If you enjoy this show, make sure you're hitting that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give us a comment down below if you see any. If you've seen players that stand out to you, uh, give us a shout. We'll, we'll talk about them because there's a lot more guys that we're not going to talk about on this episode that are, are impressing. So uh, give us a comment there. Uh, check out the other shows that we've got on the on the network as well. Blackhawks Banter, Maple Leafs Lounge, Grind, Grind Line, Chicks and Sticks. There's so many shows right now. A uh, new show called Howlers and Growlers, uh, Arizona Coyotes. I mean, they... They haven't won a game yet, but uh, <laughs> Patrick sure has a lot to talk about though on, on them. So um, check out the hogwriters.com for all of our written work as well. There's a ton of great content coming in every day. We've got the daily download um, that recaps all the action from the past night uh, for a few of the major teams. So I mean, check that out. And then uh, also sign up for morning skate. Uh, the newsletter has a ton of great uh news tidbits a lot of great writing in there as well uh, so i mean check that out at morningscape.io um and of course to finish it off is we're on discord as well hockey lounge uh get in there to you talk to our writers talk to fans fellow fans uh that's kind of buzzing right now too so lots of stuff happening at the hockey writers and lots of great content so let's move on uh, further east quebec the qmjhl I mean, this is a league that produces a lot of offense in the league itself. But uh, coming out of there, there are some great stars we've seen. Lafreniere, uh, Sidney Crosby, that's guys. We've got two first rounds protected, 2022 first rounds in there. Nathan Gocher, Goche, probably Goche, not Gocher because French. Uh, <laughs> and Tristan Luneau. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, this, uh, Peter, on uh, Nathan Goche, uh, who do you think about his uh, start to the season so far? Yeah, um, I, I last year when I was watching the Quebec Ramparts, I obviously, you know me with my love for Evan Naus and his play as a defenseman to a player with his mobility. There were times where I was like watching Naus, but then I would be immediately drawn to Nathan Goche and his ability to just be... I mean, kind of similar to like Connor Geeky, but, you know, doesn't quite have the hands, but he has the strength, the power to bully his way through the opposition, you know, separate the player from the puck, gain control, and then just take it out and just drive hard to the net. That's his MO. That's his game. Um, I, I'm, I'm really a big fan of him, especially if you're looking for a player with a great offensive size, awareness, skill, and the ability to just have a strong net club presence. Uh, Nathan Goche is your guy. And I, I liked what I've seen from the start. He had 31 points in the shortened season last year, already a point per game player this season. And um, what's interesting to note is I'm looking at the stats on the Quebec uh, or the QMJHL page in nine wins. He has 11 points, but in losses, he so, doesn't have a point at all. <laughs> Granted only two games where they've lost. I, I, again, you don't want to, jump to conclusions especially when we're only in october going into november already um it, it, it's just really interesting how like you know it seems like he's getting all the points when the team wins again not looking too much into it but if it goes to show he is a winner he does whatever yeah. it takes to win so there's that to look forward to with his mentality i'm liking what i'm seeing so far um really one of the players that i'm hopping on board the hype train with this season yeah. And I mean, when you look at those points and wins and, mm -hmm. you know, you look at a lot of in the NHL in general, when you look at when Connor McDavid scores, Edmonton Oilers win. I mean, it's yeah. just, <laughs> a lot of the time he doesn't score, they don't win. I mean, it, you kind of look at that. I mean, if your best players are your best players, you're going to win. So mm -hmm. uh, looks to be the case with him. Um, Greg, unfortunately you got the lesser of the two guys here at Tristan Luno has not done a ton in the, in the league so far here this season, but he is rated as supposed to be in the first round. What do you think of his game so far? Yeah, uh, 
Luno has not gotten off to the greatest of starts, but, you know, in the queue, when you're talking defensemen, it's really hard to, like, judge their performances based on numbers. Um, as we, as you mentioned earlier, they're, they're known, that league is known for offense, offense, offense. So, you know, uh, the fact that he's, um, you know, only a minus one in seven games, that's kind of impressive considering how many goals are scored in that league. He doesn't have any points yet in seven games, which is a little disappointing, um, so far. Um, you know, he had, uh, 14 assists in 31 games last season. So, you know, he's shown in the past that he could put up some offensive production. Um, but you know, it's, again, it's so tough to judge a defenseman in that league. He, he was projected early to be a first round pick. Uh, you know, I, I don't think he's done anything to like ruin that projection so far. I mean, he still has the size he's still a big kid at 6'2 and you know he's got to fill out a little bit but um you know the the production will be there what you got to look for though at at this level and especially in that league is is how he handles himself in his own zone that's what you got to keep your eyes open for not necessarily points um or you know plus minus per se even though I mentioned it but um you know the foundation is definitely there and and sometimes it's good to see a kid struggle for a little bit yeah. especially at the start of the season see how they rebound because you know what when you if you're going to get to the NHL and even when you're in the NHL struggles come and it's how you react to that and and how you make yourself better because you struggled that are keys so um maybe a little adversity to start the season is just what a player like he needs yeah I, and that's i mean defenseman like you said, it's hard to kind of judge his play by points. I mean, you got to look at it and actually watch him play. So, I mean, there's no sense panicking. He's not going to be a first round pick or whatever. So uh, we'll see how he goes throughout the rest of the season. Um, So standouts, uh, Peter on the QMJHL, what do you think uh, guys that have stood out so far this season uh, right now? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, I, again, I hate to go with the uh, top player or leading point getter, but Xavier Borgo from the Shwinnega Cataracts. I mean, I, this is a player that I really loved and I thought he could, he was like, you know, a top 15 player in the draft draft went to 22 to the Edmonton Oilers, but I thought of him with his smarts and his, and his ability to read the play. So well, I really thought that he would have been a top 15 pick and he's just killing it right now. I sure. mean, there's no other way to put it. I mean, already uh, coming off a 40 point season, shortened season, where he had, uh, again, 40 points in 29 games. He's already up to 19 in 11 so far this season. So he's definitely bound to smash that 40 point total and even possibly surpass the 71 that he had in 2019 20. And I'm really, I, I mean, the Edmonton Oilers have the high end players in McDavid, Dreisaitl. Uh, Nugent Hopkins, but they have another centerman that coming up and, you know, be that two-way pivot that they definitely need and need to have in sort of that middle six section. So I really think that uh, Borgo is going to be a really great player for them going forward a few years out, but they have a lot to like with his game so far. Yeah, Borgo's uh, sh- certainly impressed. And again, like I said before, Edmonton needs guys to come up and uh, start taking some spots. Um, so, I mean, there's another guy. Uh Greg, what do you think? Uh, guys that are standing out so far in the queue. Just one thing on Borgo, because that was a guy I wanted to talk about a little bit too. But, uh, you know, I'm, the thing that impresses me a lot about him is his way to find holes in the defense and get to yeah. the spots on the ice where nobody's yeah. at. And can you imagine what he can do that playing on a line with, with either McDavid and or Dreisaitl? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's going to be plenty of soft spots on the ice for him to find with his talent that that could be a a, a heck of a pick there in Edmonton Mm -hmm. but I'm going to go uh with a guy that was taken much later in the draft uh William DeFore of the uh St. John Sea Dogs he was picked uh he was a fifth round draft pick by the New York Islanders uh back in 2020 like that was so long ago but um (laughs) but you know he's got uh 10 goals right now on the season I believe it is um yeah 10 goals 18 points in 11 games. Uh, he's a plus 11, so he's he's been doing it offensively. He's kind of like your throwback power forward that you don't see a whole lot of in, in this time. Day. Everybody's all about, you know, these fast, smaller guys that that can score. But he's you know six foot three, over 200 pounds already. 
Um, he just pressures the puck. He, you know, he's just a beast. When he wants that puck, he's going to take it from you. And yeah. and when he gets the puck, he's only got one destination. That's hard to the net. Um, and and he scores more times than not. He's that throwback. You know, he'd be like the perfect guy for for like those '80s Islanders teams. You know, mm-hmm. he's that kind of player. Uh, I like what I've seen so far out of him. Uh, and I think maybe uh, New York. Uh, may have got themselves a little bit of a steal uh, getting him in, in the fifth round. Um, so we'll see how he progresses as the season goes on, but he's off to a heck of a start. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's a guy, two guys I had on my radar as well, but I'm going to talk about a guy that wasn't drafted last year. He was um, on our radar. We had a profile on him, I believe. Uh, Theo Rochette uh, wasn't drafted. He was supposed to be, he was eligible last season, was invited to the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, camp. Uh, you know, Peter, you could probably speak to how he did there. But, I mean, he started off to a great start, 19 points in the 11 games so far. And uh, in the league leaders in points, and this is a guy that uh, could, you know, re-enters the draft this year, maybe drafted. Again, these are guys that we're going to start seeing, you know, we have new guys coming in, but some guys that weren't drafted last season be- that we thought were maybe drafted now. So, I mean, he's, he's off to a great start and putting himself back on the radar of scouts and we'll see what happens with him. But, uh, you know, fact that he's doing a lot better. I mean, he had 30 points in 32 games last season. I'm, I don't know why he wasn't drafted in my mind. I mean, I believe I had him on my rankings. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll see how he goes for the rest of the season and puts him on himself maybe in that conversation for the 2022 draft. Um, yeah, so that's the cue. Uh, let's go away from the junior leagues and talk about the development league, the American hockey league, which Greg is really connected into. Um, we'll start with you on, on this then, Greg, uh, who have you seen in the AHL so far that, uh, you, that's impressed you, uh, apart from Lucas Reichel, that is. Well, um, <laughs> a guy, a guy that I, I think has done really well in his first, uh, little bit of pro uh, experience is uh, Jack Quinn, who was taken eighth overall by the Sabres uh, in 2020. Uh, he's off to a really good start um, with the Rochester Americans. He's got four goals and eight points in his first five games on the season. So he's been, uh, he's made the transition. Really, I know he played, uh, you know, 15 games last year as well, but he only had nine points in those 15 games. So he's almost eclipsed that already in just the first couple of weeks of the season. Uh, obviously, you guys in Canada are well aware of him playing on uh, for world on you know the world junior team um last year and and performed well so uh, so far he's living up to the, the the hype of being a top 10 pick and uh he's he's having a really good season so far we'll see how that carries over and you know with everything going on in buffalo i, I don't be surprised if he's playing uh with the sabers at some point uh this season i don't think he's going to be in the ahl super long yeah, especially if they keep winning and it adds more talent. To that. I mean, five one and one. That I mean, although I mean, the Sabers have started strong in the past and just fallen off. Um, last few seasons, I think they've started ridiculously well and then they end up being last. So and maybe it's not. Maybe it's too early to say that they're going to do well all season. But um, Peter, who do you think in the AHL that you've seen uh, that has impressed you so far? Yeah, um, I, I, we talked about him in when we were discussing, you know, the rankings of like the top 100 prospects and Scott Perunovich, I, I was a player that needed to take a major step forward and put his name forth that, you know, he deserves to be on the St. Louis uh, Blues roster. Um, obviously, he finished up his college career, but I think now is the time where he's got to take that next leap forward. And we're seeing that right now where, you know, he's got nine points in five games, eight assists with the Springfield Thunderbirds. Um most recently on the 24th, he had a three assist game. So the, the puck movement is there. The passing abilities that he's known for is, is on full display. Someone that you know, uh, he, I, and again, I think maybe he, he should have had a chance to make this roster this year. Um, I guess with the blues depth on the left side, it is a little bit crowded because he is a left-handed shot. Um, throw him down in the minors, let him develop a little bit longer. You don't want to rush someone with his capabilities, but his strengths are, you know, becoming prominent. They are, they are, um, you know, on full display. And I really think that if, you know, an injury happens, you can rest assured that, uh, Scott Perunovich is going to be 
their guy that they're going to be or their probably only defenseman that they're going to call up in that regards because I don't see anybody else who can not necessarily fill that role. But if you want to get a good look at him, now's, now's your chance. If yeah. those those injury opportunities are going to be huge for Perutovic to perform. And the fact that he's taking advantage of the se- of the early part of the season right now, it's a good step in the right direction. Yeah, Perunovic is, yeah, we talked about in that top and he's been knocking on the door for a couple of seasons. So it'd be great to see him actually get some good time in the NHL. Um, I'm going to stick close to home here and talk about Dylan Danilo Klimovic uh, in the AHL so far. I mean, he's started out really well. He hasn't scored in a bit. But, uh, I mean, it's been really early. But every game, he's been impressive. He's shown that he can play in this league. He's got tons of skill. He's been talking when people was talking about it. If he wasn't Belarusian, he would have been drafted in the top 10. I mean, the way he started his, his pro career has been insane um, in Abbotsford. And I think he, he could probably be in the NHL. But, I mean, there's no sense in rushing this guy. Um, the way that Pud Colson has been used in the NHL so far, I don't agree with. I wrote an article on this. I mean, that's a whole huge discussion <laughs> why he's being played seven minutes, but, uh, and max 10. So, I mean, Klimovic is playing a ton down in the AHL and he's, he's sure showing why he was on everyone's radar after that under 18s performance this wasn't a flash in the pan. This guy is a real deal. So uh, tons of skill and it's going to be exciting to watch him. Uh, develop. So that's a guy I've kind of had my eye on here. Um, another guy, just a quick things, Alexander Holtz uh, as well. He's got, he's got five goals in four games and for the, you know, the New Jersey De- for the Utica Comets, which was the Canucks farm team before. So uh, he's, he started off really well. So we'll see how any of these guys can get called up and see what they can do in the NHL. So um, it's exciting to watch these guys and all these prospects. So, uh, that's great. And that leads us into our prospects of the week. I mean, we probably going to be names that are going to repeat themselves here. Uh, we've talked about a lot of standouts, uh, but for the week, uh, what do you think? We'll start with you, Peter, on who's the your prospects prospect of the week uh, this week. I don't want to necessarily say of the week, but early on in the season, and I'm going to go with a rookie that's not even – projected to go into this year's draft and everyone should be keeping an eye on is Callum Ritchie of the Oshawa generals. Um, looking way too ahead to 2023, but he is a name to really keep an eye out. This guy has got really great, a really great frame, really powerful shot, great hockey sense. He, he, he's going to be, I, I don't necessarily think a top three pick because that's going to be reserved for Bedard, Mishkov, Fantilli, but you could rest assured that he can be a top five player given his size and ability and his awareness. He's just got that instinct and drive that just matches anybody else on the ice. So not necessarily player of the week for me, but like someone that I've really taken a liking to early on for next year's draft. Yeah. And I mean, (laughs) next year's draft is going to be insane. I mean, Mm -hmm. so much talent and yeah. So, I mean, that, that's going to hold new story. Um, Greg, who are you tapping on the shoulders that prospect of the week for you? Uh, maybe a little bit of a cop out because the OHL named him his player of the week, but he deserves a <laughs> shout out. And that's, uh, that's Roy Karen uh, up there with the Sioux Greyhounds. I mean, I think this is definitely an under the radar kind of guy. He was a sixth round pick by the flames a year ago, but he, he had a, just a gigantic week. So if we're talking about the week, yeah, I don't think anybody, you know, he had uh, five goals, five assists in his three games. And those came in back-to-back games. He had um, two and two against Sudbury and then followed it up against North Bay with three and three uh, was held off the score sheet to file in the rematch with North Bay. But one of the things that impressed me the most about his performance is that he also won 68% of his face-offs in those three games. And he's, over 61% on the season. Um, and, you know, I think face-off is one of the most underrated stats in the game of hockey. I mean, you can't score goals unless you have the puck. And the best way to get the puck is to win face-offs. So that's, uh, you know, something that I always watch, especially with the young kids, because, you know, prospects can struggle at the dot. And so if, if you've got that rolling early in your career, it's, it should continue over. So uh, that's who I'm going with this week. Uh, apparently uh, myself and the OHL voters feel the same way, but uh, very impressive performance up there. 
Yeah. Um, I don't want to repeat a player I've talked about already. So I'm going to go with again, close to home. And uh, I mean, he only played one game this week, but I've been impressed by him all season here is Victor Pearson, uh, Kamloops Blazers coming over from Sweden. This is his first year in North America. Um, low seventh round pick this guy was uh, for the Canucks and you know <laughs> for a guy to be a seventh round pick and come in and actually be a dominant defenseman in the WHL is I'd say pretty impressive the WHL is a really tough league uh, for defensemen and these the WHL develops defensemen quite well so I mean he had two assists yesterday um, and he's been dominant all season he's got uh, six points in the seven games so far uh already has his first WHL goal and uh, you know, for Vancouver loves its Swedish uh, defenseman too. So <laughs> uh, we'll see how he does throughout. I mean, that again, WHL, I mean, junior success doesn't mean NHL success, but uh, you know, the last guy that came out of the dub for the Canucks that were, you know, was uh, Alexander Edler uh, coming from Kelowna. So, I mean, it's going to be exciting to watch this guy and two assists this week. So he's my uh, prospect of the week. Again, not fully dominant guy, but, you know, I, I think he's he's started off this uh, season quite well. So I, I'm picking him. But, yeah, that's that's the show, guys. Uh, you know, prospects, everyone's playing hockey now, which is great. Uh, I mean, and lots of stuff happening in the draft. And we kicked off our, uh, you know, starting off, preparing for the world juniors now. So, I mean, look for that in the next, you know, next month, we're going to have a whole bunch of previews, stuff like that. And uh, Peter, you're heading that up. So it's going to be crazy on what type of coverage that we're going to have. We're going to have the same coverage as last season and uh, a lot more, hopefully um, content coming. So Absolutely. world juniors draft, whole ton of stuff uh, coming up. Uh, Peter, you want to add anything to that for world juniors or? Um, it's that time of year again, get ready because the, the, the content last year was great and we want to match that again this year. So keep an eye out. It's going to be coming very soon. Yeah. Um, uh, and then right after that draft coverage, so <laughs> in profiles will start rolling out. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming on the hockey writers, um, and our show. So lots of guests planned as well. So, um, Again, this has been the Prospect Corner Develop, uh, presented by the Hockey Writers. That, again, if you enjoy the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the like button, uh, notification bell, and all that stuff. Um, make sure you're checking out uh, all the shows on the network as well. We've got a bunch of shows I already mentioned before. Uh, Daily Download, Morning Skate, uh, so much stuff. So uh, make sure you're, uh, you're checking out all that stuff. Um, for Peter and Greg, this is Matthew, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Prospect Corner.